Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So today, guys, we'll do my Euro quarterfinal predictions, guys. Euro quarterfinal predictions, guys. So I want to know your guys' predictions in the comments below. We're going to go ahead and get started. So let's start with the first game we've got here, Spain versus Germany, guys. This is probably the game of the tournament, Um, and these are probably the best two teams in the tournament. What makes this match so fascinating is that both teams have been so good offensively. Both teams have been playing so beautiful football. They're playing so direct, both these teams. And we are we haven't really seen both these teams play this kind of brand of football in a long time. You know? So what makes us that's what makes, makes it interesting. For Germany in particular, I think what's I'm very excited to see is that midfield battle. That midfield battle, ooh, it's gonna be it's gonna be nasty. It's gonna be nasty, guys. Ooh. Cruz, Gundogan, uh the Andrich versus Spain's Pedri, uh Fabian Ruiz. And uh, Rodri. And then also that attack wise. I think both teams have defensively shown their lapses in the competition. I think Sp uh, Germany have had more lapses, although I will say Germany have been more tested, where Spain are not really as tested. So it's a very difficult one to call, guys. It's such a difficult one to call. I'm going to give the edge to Germany, though, just because I feel like the home nation, I feel like Germany for me, they're going to rise. And I feel like the home nation, the, the, the home fans will support them. And I just got a feeling Germany is going to do this. And I have a feeling that uh, substitutions will make the difference. I have a feeling substitutions will make the difference. Players that come off the bench, I think, could make an impact. Like, I'm looking at Germany's one. I could see, like, Fulker coming off the bench. I could see, like, you know, maybe Sonic coming off the bench and doing something, you know. Uh, whereas to Spain, I don't really feel like they have a lot of good difference makers off the bench. And I feel like Germany have more goal scorers than Spain. That's also another thing. Germany, I could rely on Musiala to score. I could rely on Florian Wurz to score. I could rely on Havertz. I could rely on those guys. Spain, on the other hand, is is there's not a lot of goal scorers in the team. You got Nico Williams that can do the goals, and you got um, Fabian Ruiz. And that's pretty much it on a consistent basis. Yamal isn't really consistent. Um, who else isn't really consistent? I would say, yeah. So I, I'm gonna go with uh, Germany to prevail. I'm gonna say Germany wins two one after extra time. Uh, I'm gonna think Germany's gonna do this, and I think it's gonna be a close game. This will be a good game, though. I'm very excited to see this game, uh, and I'm very much looking forward to probably the game of the round, guys. Game of the round. So Germany, I'm gonna go with them to score. Uh, no one is suspended for this game, which is actually interesting. And for Germany, as I said, one a big big dilemma for Germany is who's gonna be starting center back. Are you gonna start tall or shoulder back? Because we saw how good shoulder back was against Denmark. So maybe you should actually start shoulder back in this game. Maybe you should. Yeah, I'm going to go Germany to score, and I'm going to say who's going to score the opening goal. Hmm, I'm going to say... I'm going to say Gundogan, actually. Gundogan scores opening goal. Portugal versus France, guys. Next up here, guys. Ooh, Portugal, France. Ah, uh, Portugal, man. I've been so unconvinced of Portugal. Portugal have been super underwhelming, guys. I have not been impressed with Portugal whatsoever in this Euros. Yes, they've got the job done against uh, Turkey, and you know, but they've been so underwhelming, guys. The attacking talent Portugal have is crazy, and it just feels like Portugal are just so pragmatic, so defensive, and I just not not been impressed with them. You know, Ronaldo has not really had a good tournament. He's he's had an okay tournament, I would say, but not been as good as his standards are. And yeah, for Portugal, as I said, man, I just the, my big issue with Portugal is where the oh, oh the the lineup that Robert uh, Roberto Martinez is going to choose. Because I feel like for me, Bernardo Silva shouldn't be a starter. I feel like you got to start. Uh, you have to start like Pedro Neto. You have to give him opportunity. Sergio Conceição, like these kind of players, just Francisco Conceição. Sorry, they deserve opportunities. So it's very, it's very difficult to discuss this Portugal team. Now France, on the other hand, is almost kind of the same as Portugal. France have been so underwhelming. They yet to score a goal from open play, which is crazy. And for France, what makes them very difficult, what makes France so weird is they still haven't figured out their attack. Their attack is still very underwhelming. Um, defensively, they've been very good, though. Defensively, they've been very solid. They've only conceded one goal in the tournament so far, which has been a penalty. So you have to credit how good France are defensively. You know, Saliba's been amazing. Konate has been um, So not Konate. Upa Makan has been great. Koundé has been great. Magnon has been great. Theo Hernandez. See, the thing with this France team is that they're difficult to beat. They're really difficult to beat in the knockout stage, and France generally go far. And whichever team usually beats them, it usually takes them 120 minutes to beat them, as we saw with Portugal and uh, Switzerland, respectively, in the last couple of tournaments. I'm going to go with France, though. So I feel like France are the favorites, and I think they're going to do it. So it's going to be a 
It's going to make a boring 1 0 win. I just like France are just difficult to beat. I, I have a feeling France will probably score from a set piece. Um, and yeah, uh, there will probably be some kind of set piece in this game. And I'm going to go France to score. I'm going to go with Defender to score the goal. Mm, I'm going to say the Defender that I think is going to score. I got okay. This might come as a crazy pick, guys, but I'm gonna go with um. I'm gonna go with Saliba. I think Saliba is gonna score, guys. I had a feeling he might score like a header, uh, that gives up a France to win. And I'm gonna go with that. This is actually the one I'm most confident in of the four. Um, so I'm gonna go with France to beat Portugal one nil, guys. A very un underwhelming game, but yeah, I got I got France to prevail. Next up is England versus Switzerland, guys. England, man, they've been so underwhelming. England have been so bad this year, guys. They haven't been great. And what makes this England team so underwhelming is the amount of talent that England has wasted. Like, we're not seeing the best of Palmer. Palmer still hasn't been given a fair chance. We're still yet to see um we're still yet to see uh Palmer get opportunities. We are to see Eze, Tony, like England have been so underwhelming, and I still don't understand why Foden is still starting for England. It's just it's mind boggling to me. Although they're in Switzerland, have been amazing. Switzerland have been amazing. They've been so solid defensively. Attacking wise, great. That midfield Switzerland have is insane. Shaka has been amazing in the midfield. Then you got uh, Shakiri has been good. And Doye, Abishir. Like Switzerland are so difficult to beat. And the, for the England, as I said, they're coming into this one heavy favorites, of course. But my issue with England is just that is individual brilliance going to carry them again? Because that's why I feel like with England in this tournament is that it feels like individuals are carried England. I are yet, I'm yet to see England play as a collective team performance. Anytime they've got the goal, it's been through individuals. Like, Bellingham scored two goals, you know. Uh, Kane has got that goal. And then, obviously, Kane scored that great goal against Denmark. But, yeah, England, man, I've just been so underwhelmed. Uh, the one thing that makes England good is that defensively they're very solid. So, I'm going to say, actually, you know what, guys? I'm actually going with upset. I actually have Switzerland to win this one. I think Switzerland, for me, are just coming into Switzerland in better form. A better momentum, and I just think Switzerland for me are just match up so well because I look at Granit Jacques in particular, he is better than mine, he's better than Declan Rice. I mean, look at the season he's had, and I look at that Switzerland back line amazing. Somber, uh, you got um, Akanji, Rodriguez like that. Switzerland are just more so complete as a team, and they're not relying on individual players. England are so. I'm gonna go with Switzerland to win. I'm gonna say Switzerland wins <clears> 2 <throat> 1. I think 2 1. I'm gonna say Switzerland wins. And I'm going to say Switzerland wins after extra time, I'm, I'm not potentially saying. I think I'm going to say after extra time, to be honest. And I'm going to go with who's going to score the goal. I'm going to go with do, uh, I'm going to go with Grand Jacques. I think Jacques is actually going to score in this game, guys. Funnily enough. And then the final game we got here, guys. It is Netherlands versus Turkey. This is such a difficult match to call because I am so split on this one, guys. Netherlands, for me, have shown great prom promises. You know, I think that win they got against... um. Uh, Romania was incredible. It was a huge, huge win, and that was probably the best Netherlands performance I've seen in the Euros. My issue with the Dutch, though, is the attack is so, so limited. I feel like, I'm sorry to say, guys, I feel like Netherlands is Cody Gakpo FC. Without Cody Gakpo, guys, this Netherlands team is very underwhelming the attack, because I know people are going to break it. What about Javi Simmons? Guys, Javi Simmons is a talented player. He's very talented. He's He has high IQ. His dribbling is amazing. He doesn't offer you goals, so that's the problem. And then I'm sorry, I'm not trusting Weghorst. Weghorst is a super sub merchant. I'm not trusting Malin. You see where I'm coming from, from where guys? Where Netherlands they don't really have anyone else as a consistent goal scorer than other than Cody Gakpo. Bergwijn's also good too. At Netherlands, to me, defensively, they've been pretty solid for the most part in the Euros. Um, but what makes Netherlands for me, like I said, that's it's just that attack that really worries me. Turkey, on the other hand, I've been really impressed. I think that win. Because I wasn't so convinced what Turkey did in the group stage. Like, yeah, they did the bare minimum. They just made it through in second. But what made me really concerned with Turkey was how bad they were defensively, especially that game against Portugal. But I think the issue with Turkey is that Montella, the substitute, I think the fact that he's just so inconsistent with lineups. Like, we see so much, so many changes in lineups. And I think Turkey, for me, defensively, have been very, um, they actually have improved. And I think that game against Austria proved. Now, what the one thing that really worries me for Turkey is the fact that uh, Kochu and I think Yield, uh, their other guy is suspended. Uh, let me check. Oh, yeah. Yuxik is Yuxik suspended. Now, Chalana will be back for suspension, which I think is huge. He's obviously one of the most integral players. He can obviously control the midfield and give that presence. So, for Turkey, as I said, man, my issue with Turkey is 
is that game against Austria just a one-off or was that actually like a consistent performance? Because that's what I'm worried about because I feel like both of the teams, they didn't, they pl- played a lot better than I expected and they both won when I didn't expect them to win. So it's really, really hard to say, guys. I got a feeling this game could go to Penns. And if it goes to Penns, I have to back Turkey. I have to back Turkey. I don't trust the Dutch on Penns. Um, and I, I think Turkey, what especially that what the Gunnik did in the last game, make that crazy save at the end, I think Gunnik is capable. I don't trust Verbergen on Penns. I just don't trust. So I'm going to go ahead Turkey to win on Penns, but it's really close. I could see Netherlands very much do it. I just think Turkey, for me, I think because of the fact that there's no real pressure, I think they'll do well. I think when you put pressure on Turkey, they do bad. And for Netherlands, as I said, this is they have opportunity here, but I just think I just think what Turkey did was more incredible to uh, Austria. I think I've been more. I think that win against Austria was so much more convincing to me than Netherlands. And like, let's be real, Romania. It was Romania didn't offer any challenge. So I'm gonna go out, uh, Turkey to prevail on pens. But my goodness me, it's gonna be close. It's gonna be close. I'm gonna say a two-two draw, guys. I think it's gonna be a high-scoring game. I think because I I just I just think both defenses are going to have I just think it's going to be a high scoring game and I'm going to go Netherlands. I actually think Netherlands will actually score first though. Uh, but I think uh Turkey will equalize. I think this will be kind of that kind of game. I think Netherlands will actually score first and uh, then I think Turkey will equalize. So I'm going to go to Cody Gakpo to score. I think he's going to do it. Whatever the case may be, Ben, we have some very good some uh, quarter, uh quarterfinal games upcoming of course. You guys know a match reaction. I'll probably do the match reaction on Sunday, guys. Uh, I don't know if I can do it on Saturday because we have the Copa America games. So what I might do is like maybe on Sunday we'll do like a two stre- we'll do two streams that day. We'll do a Copa America and the Euros, uh, just because of how late the stuff goes. So maybe we'll just do a Copa America one right after the one. We'll see, we'll see, man. But uh, anyway, so if you guys did enjoy this video, uh, please run a like and subscribe. And let me know if there's any major talking points in the comment section below. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.